there will only ever be one chosen one. But his bloodline holds an extraordinary power that has a connection to the force that is unique. That's just fact. Can we explore what that means for Luke and Leia, and eventually his grandson Ben? What are the secrets of Anakin's bloodline? Okay, cameras will take a second. <laughs> oh, and actually, like how yours is super fast. Mine is super fast because I am not using the camera from the uh, from video. Oh, engine. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. What? What? What's going on? He uh, identifies as a gray square. I don't know. <laughs> Let me see. Well, there you go. There, there, we go. Go. there you go. There we go. Okay. Easy. I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> All right. Well, Tyler, I mean, what secrets does your bloodline have? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a question. He's what like, a question. Like, Qui-Gon, would you like to answer? <laughs> 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 where's where's the midichlorian count <laughs> it's over nine thousand. anyway <laughs> wrong universe <coughs> oh, so yeah no i think um one of the things that i really want to make clear is is it's just that you know there's a reason why our film's first film is called the chosen one and that reason is of course because he's my favorite character <laughs> uh, but you know uh there will only ever be one chosen one um that's never ever going to change but i think one of the things that i'm trying to question with our movie is the idea that the person that is the chosen one can be somewhat separated from the prophecy that is tied to him right um the prophecy is really about bringing balance to the force and i think you know he can still be the chosen one that brings balance to the force but i don't think he's done yet and that's kind of like my thing where I think that, you know, he can now that he's a force ghost, he can be somebody that guides his family, specifically his bloodline, his own bloodline, um, to to continue that prophecy. Uh, as as Qui-Gon said in our trailer, which I'll play in a little bit, um, you know, uh, con the prophecy continues. Um, and I think that's the premise that I think I'm trying to get at. And certainly for that, you know, I, I, I chose... Uh, to bring back the last Skywalker because it was a travesty that he died. Absolute travesty. Agreed. Yeah, and that's something that I really like the way you think about it. There's there's a couple different ways you can think about it. Yeah, I made absolutely. it kind of reminds me of like Legend of Zelda that there's links all the time, but and it's always Link, but it's not always the same Link, so you can go that direction. <laughs> or, you know, you basically have Anakin Skywalker from the beginning is born of the Force and then stays with all of these chosen heroes throughout time until Sorry. it's time for Star Wars to end and you have the final battle, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's there's a couple ways you can go about it, but I've I've always liked the idea that yeah, the prophecy the prophecy remains. The chosen one may be a different person throughout all these different timelines, but I mean, if you if you really do fulfill it. And you ended at six. Star Wars is basically done. But I mean, the Force, regardless, will will always remain. So there will be a battle between dark and light as long as the universe persists. So we've got to be able to keep going somehow. Yeah, yeah, I totally uh, I, I share in that thought. What about you, Tyler? Uh, he yeeted the Force back into balance on the second Death Star, right over the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I love that. I love that. What about you, Alex? What are you? What are your thoughts around the Chosen One and its prophecy? I think it's always been about the bloodline, right? I, I, I've I always agree. been a big fan of uh, the Skywalker legacy, right? And I feel like uh, Anakin being the central point, it's only natural for it to pass on to Ben, right? So I think the idea of of him dying, it's just kind of uh, leaves kind of a bitter it's taste, anticlimactic, right? Yeah, it leaves a bitter taste, and it's kind of like okay, um, so. In a way, it doesn't feel like Star Wars also, like weirdly, even if it may look like it, it still doesn't because it doesn't have like that that history that you're bringing with it. It's always about the history that that it, that it follows. So at least for me, that's always what it felt like. Yeah, and it's, it's what we was talking about before when um, I haven't watched much of Rebels, but I've seen the scene when Maul refers to Luke Skywalker Luke, as the chosen one, the chosen right? One. Like, mm -hmm. In his eyes, he was, you know, is he the chosen he one? Is. He he asked Obi-Wan and yeah, so <laughs> yeah. passed on that way through him as well. So 
I agree. I agree with that. I, I actually, that is one of the key elements that I took into consideration when I was writing the story was that scene in, in Rebels because I'm like, oh, so you can call him the chosen one, you know, him mean Luke, right? You call, you can call him the chosen one. So if, if Luke and, and Leia had kids, would they be also chosen ones? Because I mean, George Lucas, and this is another part, right? Well, they're Skywalkers. So. Right. But the other part was the George Lucas. And if you've, if you've ever read any of the Paul Duncan books, George Lucas absolutely toyed with the idea of making Leia the chosen one. Mm -hmm. um, I read it. So yes, yep. yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And so uh, because you know, at, and and you know, out of uh, you know, out of all of the Skywalkers, you know, they, they they have all had a moment of doubt. Anakin, of course, fell. You know, he he fell to that doubt. Uh, Luke had a moment of doubt several times. One that you know we don't like it too much, but <laughs> but he did have moment of weakness before. I know, I know, but he did have a moment of weakness, right, in Return of the Jedi. Uh, when he kind of went after his, his dad and and and, uh, and had that that little bit, but he, you know, he came back to it. But out of all of them, the one person that has never had that is Leia. Leia has never faltered. She has never wavered. Um, she has always been a lightsider, and she's never uh, and and she's she put all of her energy into that, right? Like uh, with the resistance and and you know and within the Senate and all that good stuff as well. So. I think that that's uh, that's, a, that's a piece that I I gravitated to. Zach, what are your thoughts as like a writer? And a I, I think the the whole chosen one bloodline concept is very interesting because how long? Like, there's a lot of questions you could ask. Like, how long does this continue? Um, why is this happening? Is it because Plagueis created Anakin, or you know, indirectly created Anakin, and then um, the chosen one always has to rebalance the Force? and what would happen if there were no chosen ones left it's 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 so layered and and uh nice. complex and i'm excited to to kind of dive into that in this project yes yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> right and i i i love the idea also that you know uh if you think about ben right and you think about destiny and we talked a little bit about this sack right where we think about what destiny is was he destined to be a dark sider first right just like just like anakin was anakin destined to fall to the dark and become darth vader uh is that something that was predetermined for him and if that's the case then that's possible that it was predetermined for ben solo to fall to the dark right um and so uh, you know you can think about that that's there's a lot of complexities in that right and then if you think about you know obviously in our movie uh, there is two that become one, and there is a yes, I know, Ray. <laughs> uh, but there is that, and there is that diet in the force. So if if the diet in the force is something that was predetermined, also, right? You know, just think about you know how can that affect like future generations? Um, you know, and and when they say you know a diet hasn't been seen for generations, it is very evident to me or anybody that reads you know the story of Darth Revan and Bastilla Shan that they were a dyad in the force we just never called them that right they just never had yeah. the title of a dyad but they functioned as one every power that Bastilla and Revan had was quote unquote stolen <laughs> by JJ and put on Ben and Ray. Uh, force heal all of that right so um, I think it comes from that. So I think, uh, I think can we, uh, gonna... can we kick Star Wars dog from the chat? <laughs> We're just going to kick him out. Just completely out. <clears throat> Revan's ending is a bit boring. <laughs> that is terrible. That is a terrible take. He came oh, from my that? community and I don't L like that take. take. Get out of here. L <laughs> take. That is an L take. Yes, for sure. What? <laughs> but we don't bully yeah. here. So your opinion's okay. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I agree with A21. Revan might have been the chosen one in the Old Republic. Yeah, I like that idea. That's actually really a, a really... Oh, that's fucking... That's actually really yeah, cool. That's, cool. <clears throat> that's a really good idea, right? So I, I, I kind of love that. <laughs> ah, there's Gatekeeper Damien. Hi. And that, that <laughs> battle continues, you know, when you think about it. So that, that goes throughout eternity. You know, Revan was in stasis basically for, what, 300 years, years, 500 yeah. years? Yeah, just just constantly fighting against it, so... Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, 